Yeah, that's staggering. I mean, you know, every time you get your head around that, was it like 19% of GDP is on healthcare or something? It's just, and, and that's been going up like since 8%, I think, for the last couple of decades. I mean, yeah, that speaks a little bit subtly of what you're talking about here. And then last thing is population. We're seeing birth rates decline in most major countries now to where they, they don't have enough to actually keep the country growing. This has been happening in Japan for a long time, but now in Europe as well, many countries can't sustain population growth. Exactly. And that's the good news is that that uh, by doing this, by extending people's healthy lifespan, we're going to maintain the economies rather than having a declining economy. We're already seeing in Japan and even China, this decrease in fertility and birth rates is going to jeopardize their long term viability. And we really need to solve it. And the really the only way to do that besides improving fertility is to keep people healthy and productive. Um, and if, you know, I, I argue it's not just a risk keeping people alive, it's actually an imperative. We have to do this to keep the world's economy going. Otherwise, we're going to be spending too much money keeping people alive in nursing homes, and we're not going to have enough, enough people to fill the jobs that are required um, in the future. And so, you know, otherwise, we're going to have generations of people just looking after kids and grandparents and great parents uh, and grandparents and we, we just can't afford to have that already you look at Japan they're suffering for that reason and fortunately Japan has kept their elderly healthier that was really the, the only way out of that issue for the Western world for the UK and the US if we don't do something about this what we call the gray tsunami economically we're going to be in real trouble 20 30 years from now it also seems to make a lot of sense. I mean, like you said, if you've got someone with this, like literally a lifetime of intellectual property, connections, wealth, you know, again, why not have them stay with us another five or 10 years? Like the world can only be a richer place as opposed to if you just locked all those people up somewhere and said they couldn't talk to anybody or like, or died, you want them around because that, that adds to the, that adds to the, the economy that adds to everything. Right. Well, it's a tragedy every time somebody dies, uh, whether it's a kid or an older person, because you're, you're right. Uh, there's a huge investment in somebody's life. And when, when they're gone, we lose all of that. And, uh, and there's a richness to society having older people who are around. Increasingly, CEOs are in their 60s and 70s, even 80s. And these are some of the best CEOs out there because they've seen the cycles of business and they've, they understand how to um, give people their greatest potential and how to hire the right people and build teams. Um, you know, there, there are some people who do stick around for too long. There are some politicians who I think, in, and many of us think, have gone past their prime. But on the other hand, what if we kept them young? Would they maintain their political views or would they become more youthful in how they looked at the world? There's also something to be said for people's outlook. If people think that they're going to be around for another 30, 40, 50 years, then would they take better care of society and the planet? I think they would. Yeah. One thing I've noticed as I've gotten older is that I just think more about, about the collective. I think more about humanity. I think more about, you know, why we're all here and less about me and why I'm here, <laughs> if that makes sense. And I know when I watch people like Ray Dalio from Bridgewater, you know, he's, he distinctly says, you know, when I was younger, it was about competing and now it's my time to give back. And that's what I, that's, I can now notice that in myself. This is the, this is the most important thing for me right now is to pass on this knowledge in a selfless way. And um, yeah, just imagine if we had a lot of people doing that later in, in the years. Yeah, how that might change the whole world. In the narrative it's pretty fascinating or like you said maybe if they felt more youthful maybe that would delay a little bit it's interesting how all this might work on your mindset yeah well i i use my father as an example of, of somebody who was pretty pessimistic about life uh, he he's the human equivalent uh, of eeyore from winnie the pooh um and I know that any, any Brits listening would know that story very well. I was raised on that book by my grandmother. My father um, became more and more optimistic the older he got. And I think that, that if you stay healthy, that's what happens. You realize 
that we are part of something much bigger than ourselves. And especially if we become financially stable um, and we have our health, then what's left? It's all about um, community. It's about education, our legacy. And I find that myself, I've always been an educator, but the older I get, the more I realize what I want to leave behind are millions of people who are, have a better life um, and leaders in science and industry that can carry on the, you know, take the, you know, I pass the baton on to them and carry on this, this new wave of research into aging. Um, and so, you know, often I think what, what helps us is we think about what are we going to be most proud of when we're in our last days? Um, and I think a lot of us believe that leaving behind a human legacy, these people who will carry on what we haven't been able to fulfill in our own lives is the best way to, to have this legacy that I think a lot of us are striving for. You know, we're all looking for meaning in life. We want to have, I think many of us want to leave the world a better place than we left, uh, than we found it. Um, and if we don't achieve what we wanted to do in our lifetimes, the best way to do that is to leave behind those who can fulfill that. The greedy bankers are about to do it again. In 2008, they crashed our financial system and nearly bankrupted the entire global economy. Then they received trillions of dollars in government bailouts. And after, they demanded fat bonuses paid for by you, the taxpayer. It turns out the banks haven't just been screwing the American taxpayers, they're also screwing over their investors. Turns out uh, the banking industry is the worst place you could put your money despite enormous taxpayer bailouts. Now the bankers are back to take away your financial freedom. They lie and tell you that cryptocurrency isn't safe. They try to make it illegal for you to choose how to invest your hard-earned money. They lie and say cryptocurrency is used by money launderers and criminals. But look at the record. It's the banks themselves that launder hundreds of billions of dollars every year to the biggest criminal operations in the world. Leaked documents have revealed how some UK banks have helped criminals, money launderers and Russians under sanctions. American authorities discovered that the Sinaloa cartel moved $881 million through HSBC accounts as bank officials turned a blind eye to the illegality. The bankers lie and say cryptocurrency is not a real investment. Meanwhile, the smartest CEOs in the world are buying billions and billions of it. The truth is that banks lie about cryptocurrency because it makes them scared. The banks take $9 trillion per year of your hard-earned money, and they are worried that they will finally be exposed. They're scared because crypto means they can no longer control your money, which means they can no longer control you. They are scared because you might actually understand your money and intelligently decide what to do with it. Now is the time for us to come together, fight back and take control. It's time to educate ourselves, our families and our communities. Because financial education means financial freedom. We know that cryptocurrencies will help us build the new decentralized financial system of the future a banking system that is of the people, by the people, and for the people. A banking system where access to finance is a fundamental human right. A banking system that is free and fair and welcomes all humans on this earth. The DeFi revolution is happening. We, the people, can no longer be fooled. We choose to take control of our finances. We choose to take control of our freedom we choose to take control of our future. Join us and let's take back our financial freedom forever.